Right guys, this is a brief video on Ash's research into conformity. It's going to be split into two main parts, outline and evaluation. And if you're interested in some exam questions at the end, you can have a look at the video linked at the top of your screen now, where I cover some short answer, application and essay style questions. As usual, if you find this video useful, a like would be amazing. So before we properly get into the content, something to be aware of is that Ash's research is split into two sections. You've got his baseline study, which is the initial research that he did and the research that his later work was then compared to. You've also got his variations, which is where he changed certain elements of the baseline study to see how they would affect the initial results. The baseline study is not specifically named in the spec, which means that you won't get asked about it in an exam. However, the variations are named, which means that any exam questions about Ash's research will always focus on the variations rather than on the baseline study. That being said, I'm still going to go over the baseline because it will help you to make sense of the variations. And also, it's a useful study to know because even if you get a question about generic conformity research, you can still get marks for outlining the baseline study because it's still a relevant and credible study. So let's jump in and have a look at what Ash did. Ash studied conformity, and as you can see on the screen, conformity is defined as a change in a person's behavior or opinions as a result of real or imagined pressure from a person or group of people. So put simply, Ash wanted to know why people go along with stuff that other people do. Why do people bow down to pressure? And to answer that question, he produced a procedure to assess to what extent people would conform to the opinions of others, even in a situation where the correct answer is obvious. OK, and this became his baseline procedure. So in his baseline, Ash had 123 male undergraduate Americans who volunteered to take part in what they thought was going to be a perception test. Every participant was put in a group of between six and eight people where everybody else was a confederate. OK, just to be clear, a confederate is a person who is part of the research and is just pretending to be a participant. So in effect, there were between five and seven confederates in every group and only one real participant. Ash then presented the group with a card that had four lines on it, a little bit like what you see on the screen now. There was a standard line and then there were three other lines of varying lengths. And he asked the group to choose which of the three lines matched the standard line in length. Each person would then take it in turns to answer out loud which line they thought was the correct line. However, the Confederates had been instructed to all give the same incorrect answer. The seating arrangement in the group was always the same, with the participant always in second to last position. OK, so that means that they had to listen to everybody else's answer first before they made their choice. And Ash found that on average, participants conformed to an incorrect answer almost 37 percent of the time and 75% of the participants conformed at least once. Okay, so his baseline study showed that even when the answer was pretty obvious, people would still go along with the group and give an incorrect answer. So now that we've done the baseline study, let's move on to his variations. After conducting his initial research, Ash investigated the impact of three specific variables on conformity. These variables were task difficulty, unanimity, and group size. And these are the variations that are named in the spec, which means that you could be asked about the procedure, the findings, and potentially the conclusions from any of them. Okay, so let's go through them one at a time. In the group size variation, Ash varied the number of Confederates from one to 15 to see how conformity would be affected. And he found that conformity increased with group size, but only to a certain point. Three Confederates saw a rise in conformity to 31%, whereas seven Confederates saw the highest level of conformity, and that was 36%. After that, the levels of conformity started to level off again. And these findings suggest that people are incredibly sensitive to the opinions of others, especially if you take into account that the existence of just one or two Confederates was enough to sway the opinions of 
the participants. Anonymity variation, Ash added a non-conforming confederate who went against the group by either giving a different wrong answer or the correct answer. In both of those scenarios, conformity levels dropped considerably. When a different incorrect answer was given, conformity rates dropped to 9%, and when the correct answer was given, they dropped further to 5%. And that suggests that the influence of the majority depends largely on whether the majority is unanimous or not, as in, are they all saying the same thing? Having an ally or some social support from somebody who also goes against the group can be enough to reduce the pressure to conform and can allow us to be independent in our opinions and our behavior. Have the task difficulty variation where Ash made the task more difficult by making the difference between the line length smaller and therefore harder to make out. Not impossible to make out, just slightly harder than the original. Okay, and in this variation, Ash found that the rates of conformity increased. Okay, and that suggests that as tasks become more ambiguous or harder to work out what the correct answer is, people tend to look to others for guidance. And they also tend to assume that other people are right and they themselves are wrong. Okay, this is known as informational social influence and that is something that's gonna be covered in the next video. So those were the three variations and Ash's baseline. So before we move on to the evaluation section, here is a brief summary of what we've just covered just so that you can have another quick look at it. If you want to pause the video and have a quick breather while you do that, then obviously by all means do so. So the evaluation section is going to cover four evaluation points. They're not the only evaluation points that exist. However, they are the points that I think are the most useful and they do all fit nicely into an essay. So my first two points are going to be a strength and a counterpoint. So Ash's research has support from other studies that have looked into the effects of task difficulty. Okay, so for example, Lucas et al. in 2006 conducted a study where they asked participants to solve easy and hard maths problems. All the participants were given answers from three other students, and it was found that participants agreed with the wrong answers more often when the problems were harder, which supports Ash's claim that task difficulty affects conformity. OK, now something to keep in mind here is that this point is specifically for the impact of task difficulty. It's not for Ash's research in general. OK, so please remember to say that when you're writing it. Don't say research support for Ash's research. Say research support for Ash's research into task difficulty and so on and so on. However, there is also a counterpoint to Lucas's research, and that is that Lucas et al. also found that conformity is more complex than Ash first suggested, because in their research, participants who showed a high level of confidence in their maths abilities were also found to conform less on the hard tasks compared to those with low confidence. And that shows that individual differences can influence conformity by interacting with the variables like task difficulty. OK, and that's something that Ash did not take into account. So moving on, another limitation of Ash's research is that his sample was just rubbish. He had 123 male American undergraduates, which is a hugely narrow pool of participants that doesn't include women and doesn't include people from other cultures. Now, that's a problem because later research has suggested that women are more conformist than men. That was NITO in 1995. And later research has also suggested that people in collectivist cultures, where the well-being of the social group is more important than the well-being of the individual, also have higher conformity rates than individualist cultures like the US. And that was Bond and Smith in 1996. So that suggests that Ash's research lacks validity because his findings actually tell us very little about conformity in anybody except American males. OK, because he's excluded a lot of other populations which might have affected how much people conform, which means that he has potentially underestimated conformity levels. 
And then the final evaluation point is a methodological issue, and that is that the task and the situation in Ash's research were incredibly artificial and didn't reflect how conformity would work in the real world. Firstly, participants knew they were in a research study and they may simply have gone along with what was expected of them, thereby demonstrating demand characteristics and not acting naturally. Furthermore, identifying line lengths is a trivial and unimportant task with zero consequences attached to it, and so there wasn't really any reason not to conform. And then finally, according to research conducted by Fisk in 2014, Ash's research didn't represent groups that we generally experience in everyday life, such as friendship groups or colleagues or families. Okay, they were just random people put together in a group. Okay, so all of those things means that Ash's findings don't really generalize to real world situations, especially those where the consequences of conformity might be quite important or where we interact with people directly to make decisions. And therefore, it lacks external validity. Okay. So those are your four points. Remember, there are more that will also do the job, but these are the four that I would personally use. And that brings us to the end of the video. I hope it's been useful and I hope it's all made sense. Like I said earlier, if you want to have a look at some exam questions, then please check out the video that is on your screen now. If you have any questions, please pop them in the comment section below and I will do my best to get back to you ASAP. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next one.